All right, so these are vertebrae and the spine, and we're gonna go over these. This one is a cervical vertebrae, this is a thoracic vertebrae, and this is a lumbar vertebrae. And one of the things you can notice is the size of the body. So these parts here are the body. So if you notice, the cervical vertebrae has the smallest body, thoracic gets a little bit bigger, and then my lumbar vertebrae has the largest body because it has to hold the weight. Now, to give you an idea, this is the anterior portion. So if this was in your body, this part would be facing out towards the, your, out of your back. So these would actually be like this, if they were to be in there. Let's go like this here so they look more in order. So there's my cervical, my thoracic, and my lumbar. So now, we already mentioned the body there, there, and there. Now, after the body, what we have is, if you notice, there's these things right here, and these are called pedicles. The pedicles basically connects the back of the, or the body to the back of the vertebrae. So that's a pedicle right there, that's a pedicle right there, here's a pedicle, and here's a pedicle. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna look at now are the transverse processes. So if we look right here, these structures are the transverse processes. There it is on the lumbar, there it is on the thoracic, and here it is on the cervical, these little spots right in here, or these little processes right here. If you notice also in the cervical spine, we have transverse foramen. So there's actually holes in the, transfer, in, the, in the cervical spine and your vertebral artery goes through here. If we look at the next structure, what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at our superior articular facets. And this is the superior articular facets that are gonna be right here and right here on the lumbar spine, superior articular facets on the thoracic spine, and superior articular facets on the cervical spine. The superior articular facets are part of the superior articular processes, which we can see here and here, and also here, this whole structure, right? This whole structure right in here and in here, and all of this in the lumbar spine. That's right there and there, okay? So now, the next thing we're gonna have is if we have superior articular facets, we should have inferior articular facets. So if I flip these over now, these are my inferior articular facets in the cervical spine, inferior articular facets in the thoracic spine. Let me turn this like this. Inferior articular facets in the thoracic spine and my inferior articular facets in the lumbar spine. And once again, the inferior articular facets are going to be on the inferior articular processes. So this whole thing is an inferior articular process. All of this is the inferior articular process, just like over here. And then all of this would be my inferior articular process that you see right in there, on this side and on this side. Now the next thing we're gonna have after that, is if we go like this again, is we are gonna have the lamina. So the lamina is going to be right here. This is the lamina right here and right here. And here's the lamina on the thoracic spine. It's gonna be right here and right here. And the lamina on the lumbar spine would be this area that's right in here and right in here. And then finally we have the, uh, the spinous process. So this is the spinous process here. This is the spinous process here. And this is the spinous process right here. Now if I didn't mention it, the reason you have transverse foramen in the cervical spine is your vertebral artery is going to come up through these and go into the brain. And the very last thing is these are my, um, this is my vertebral foramen and your spinal cord passes through the vertebral foramen. So there it is on the lumbar spine. And that's it for the vertebrae. I'll do a different video on C1 and C2. So that's it for the vertebrae of the spinal column. Thanks for watching.